بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم شارٹ اسٹوریز آف امام سلطان محمد شاہ آن دا ٹاپک آف دا سون اسٹوری ون ان نائنٹین ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ٹوینٹی سیون ون پرسن آسک امام سلطان محمد شاہ ان ہز مہمانی ان بامبے دیٹ ہی ڈڈ ناٹ ہیو براکات ان ہز ہاؤس ریزن آف وچ واز ان نون ٹو ہیم دا امام بگن ٹو ریفلیکٹ بائی پیٹنگ ہز فور ہینڈ ایٹ آسٹ اباؤٹ ہز فیملی مدر اینڈ شاپ وچ ہی ریپلائی اکارڈنگلی سنس دا امام از اے اسپرچل ڈاکٹر ٹو ہی سوئفٹلی ڈائگنوز اٹس کوزیٹو فیکٹر اینڈ آسکڈ ڈو یو پے دا سون ریگولرلی He said that he paid, but not regularly because of heavy domestic expenses. The Imam gazed at him and told to stay away from him and then attended other mehmani. The Imam then called him near and raised his walking stick in the air and put its curved top round the neck and told him to hold its other side. It was a curious and inconceivable scenario the Jamaat watched as if he had a mom's neck with a stick. Then the Imam said, Whatever you earn in the world, give our privilege of the disowned from it. And then, if you fail to get barakat or suffer from problem or disease, then you catch your Imam's neck by this way in the world. Story 2 In 1930, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah came in Hassanabad, Bombay for gracing Didar. The Imam mounted the stage through a staircase. When he reached the Its third step he bent down the knee and restored slowly as he lifted a weighty burden on his right shoulder then reached the stage sat on the chair and respired briskly the leaders and the jamaat were highly marveled being asked by the mukhi whether there was anything wrong the imam said one ship carrying passengers passed near bombay and it was on the verge of sinking when i was climbing the stage i lifted the ship on my shoulder and rescued after making the dar the mukhi asked the reason of the ship's rescue the imam said my four followers were in the ship and it induced me to rescue them because they were regular in the sound story 3 Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah asked a person in his mehmani in Darus Salaam in 1946 How many sons you have and your cash balance as well He said I have two sons and a balance of 65000 shilling Meanwhile one leader intervened Khudawin he lies The Imam said to the leader Don't utter immoral words for him but say that he does not speak true Thus he was blushed Then the Imam asked the person to clarify it. He said, "Mola, I have however three sons, but one among them is faithless. Therefore, I don't consider him my son. I have given 65,000 shillings so far as a disown. I reckon it my real asset for hereafter. The other amount is worldly can not accompany me during my death." The Imam was pleased and blessed him. Story 4 Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah then in 1937 came in Nairobi and made several farmans and told the Jamaat with tears in eyes you arranged to bring in Africa the poor smiley moment cultivators of Kathiawar you help them because your influence in the government is too much give them plots because they are in much trouble with ultra affliction in Kathiawar You have heard the affliction fell upon Imam Hussain in Karbala such affliction is being faced by the poor moments of Kathiawar day and night I'll accept its expenses as you are the son I'll also forgive your sins when the government may approve plots for cultivation for them you write a letter and I'll send them by my own expenses thus The benefactors in the Jamaat came forward and brought a multitude of the smileys of Kathiawar and settled them in Nairobi within few years. Story 5 Wazir A. C. Rahmatullah of Bombay had no proclivity towards Ismailism and was almost renegade. He had, however, allowed his wife Janabai to go Jamaat Khana. 
During the Diamond Jubilee on March 10, 1946, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah attended varied mehmanis. His wife urged him to join in the mehmani, but he repudiated. When she insisted often, he acceded to her request. In the mehmani at Wari, Bombay, his name was announced that it was the mehmani of Abdul Hussain Karim. The Imam glanced at him. His wife brought him near the chair. The Imam removed his glass and said, I know the names of his forefathers. Then the Imam counted few names of his forefathers on the fingertips and said, The grandfather of this Abdul Hussain was Rahim. His father was Zainul Abideen. His father was Rai Rahmatullah. His father was Faru. And his father was Piru Diwani. All of them had served my house wholeheartedly. Abdul Hussain stands at the seventh generation of Piru Diwani, and he too will serve my house cordially. Best blessings, Khanabad, Khanabad. Then the Imam called him near and put his blessed hand on his head. Wazir A.C. Rahmatullah related the moment in his own words that. I felt a heavy weight as if a mountain on my head. My head lowered down as servile, which was erect so far. The tears streamed out of my eyes in drenched and perspiration. I remembered nothing what happened in twinkle of eyes. He returned his house and asked his grandmother, who was virtually blind. He said, the age of the Aga Khan Sahib is about 68 years and my grandfather expired before 70 years. He had never seen him, how he knew him and his forefathers. She replied that all Imams were the bearers of the light of Mawla Ali. She continued to say when she engaged, his grandfather was alive and his one old box still subsisted beneath the cupboard. She asked him to bring it. He brought the box which contained an old drop having many patches and a stick of bamboo. She said, These relics belong to your grandfather. He visited one to another village and collected the dasoon. When the amassed amount reached to rupees 5,000, he purchased gold coins. When he inserted it in sticks hollow and sealed its bottle ends, he then rode away on an ass towards Kirman. After an appalling itinerary of six to seven months, he reached Mahalat and presented the gold coins to the Imam. Thus, he served Imam Abul Hassan Ali and Imam Khaliullah Ali. This incident was a new phase which transformed him all of a sudden into a religious awakening and resolved with full determination to serve the community like his ancestors. He soon entered into the services in different fields. He was also appointed the Honorary Secretary of the Smilia Association for India with Wazir Ghulam Hussain Thawar Peer Muhammad as the President. In 1955, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah told him to go to Khulna, Bangladesh to take charge of the Christian Jute Mill. He became its Managing Director in 1957. With his aptitude and wise administrative skills, he changed the fate of the mill in a short period. Wazir A.C. Rahimatullah was invested the title of Alija in 1950 and Rai in 1955 in India and Wazir in 1960 in Pakistan. He died on 1st April 1963 and was buried in the compound of the Crescent Jute Mill with the request of 7,000 workers who said that he was their benefactor who made them gold out of dust. Mawlana Hazra Imam made a flying visit of the Crescent Jute Mill on 2nd December 1964 in Khulna and offered Fatiha on his grave and also paid tribute at his grave and when withdraw from the mill.